Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. The Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada, Tony Gravel, gave a press conference this week where he attempted to explain the Bank of Canada's decision not to raise interest rates anytime soon. Many had been expecting the Bank of Canada to strike a hawkish tone when it came out with its policy announcement on Wednesday, but instead the Bank of Canada kicked that can down the road, arguing that high inflation, Omicron, and the BC floods made it so the bank had to continue its monetary policy support of the Canadian economy. The Deputy Governor for his part touched on the reasons for our high inflation, when he thinks that inflation will subside, and then he also got into some issues with Canadian real estate, um, looking at why our prices have risen so high and what he expects to happen once interest rates go up. So what I want to do today is go over what the Deputy Governor had to say about our inflation rate, when he thinks it will subside, and then go over with a brief discussion what he had to say about Canada's real estate market, as I think there were some important issues in there that need to be clarified. Um, we will have more updates out next week as Canada's inflation rate is set to be released on Wednesday. We just got news that the U.S. inflation rate is expected to hit 6.8% and our own inflation is set to hit 5%. It's, uh, that was, that's the bank's prediction, so we'll definitely have an update on that. Click like and subscribe to get those updates, but for now, let's get into the speech. So we all know that Canada's inflation rate has been running hot. Last month it came in at 4.7% and as we mentioned it's expected to come in at at least 5% um, next week. So the Bank of Canada go Deputy Governor wanted to stress why the Bank of Canada thinks that inflation rate is growing. For his part, Gravel had three major reasons for the higher than usual inflation rate. Um, the first one being energy prices. We said about one third of high inflation we're experiencing is due to higher energy prices. We've all seen prices at the pump go up. Despite lower than usual gas prices in the last couple of weeks, it is expected for those prices to rebound into 2022. Secondly, the Bank of Canada thinks that hard to distance services rebounding so quickly has been a major contributor to our inflation rate. So hard to distance services, that's uh, the services where people were that were really shut down during all of the lockdowns during the height of the pandemic and the idea is once that tap gets turned back on demand floods in and businesses aren't able to accommodate that demand so we have a uh, very little supply much higher demand pushes prices up what happens is that all of a sudden um businesses see a bunch of demand for their goods or their services and they want to go out and hire but hiring is a slow process so i think it is largely a good news story it's just again uh, very symptomatic of what we're seeing is that demand jumps back so fast that uh, the supply side, in this case labor supply, takes time for it to adjust and, and meet with that demand. And the third major factor driving inflation is supply constraints. Obviously, we've heard this over and over and over again in the media, but uh, Gravel and the Bank of Canada did stress that, that the ongoing supply constraints are really one of the biggest reasons for higher than usual inflation. An important consequence of this shift in consumption patterns observed in most advanced economies is that it put extraordinary strain on global supply shipping networks. Since so many goods and their components are traded, the demand for shipping containers uh, carrying them increased, ports, rail, and trucking services came under pressure, transportation costs rose, and shipping delays intensified. However, Gravel did stress that they do expect these supply constraints to not last forever. We expect supply disruptions to unwind over time. Backlogs will be resolved, so supply should catch up. They do expect these not to last forever, which will be a big contributor to inflation subsiding. Speaking of inflation subsiding, the bank expects our inflation rate to at least somewhat normalize by the end of the first half of 2022. While we expect inflation to ease in the second half of next year, we are closely watching inflation expectations and labor costs to ensure that the forces pushing up prices do not become embedded in ongoing inflation. So figure on June or July based on the bank's predictions. Gravel was also asked about rising real estate prices, which is definitely a concern of almost everybody in the house in Canada's housing market. So he did go into detail as to why the bank thinks that these prices have risen so much, mainly shifting demand patterns as people wanted bigger and bigger houses. So you saw a shift in demand, preference shock in terms of people demanding houses further out from the core of the city or bigger houses. Again, supply constraints, not enough housing supply to meet the shifting growth and growth and demand. We've always talked about supply constraints. So supply constraints 
are continuing uh, to be an issue. And finally, the income support measures that were put in place to help Canadians. Gravel said that those measures helped create extra income for Canadians, which in turn drove prices up. Government's uh, income support also kind of kept people uh, uh, income quite high. So you saw this increase in incomes that drove a little bit of that uh, housing demand. And I have a real problem with this argument that the income support measures are con were a contributing factor to the rise in house prices. And I heard this the other day in the House of Commons as well, and I think we just need to clear this up real quick. The CERB and the CRB were put in place to help Canadians who lost their jobs because of the pandemic. It was roughly about $2,000 per month for each program. But when Gravel and people in the House of Commons say that it has helped to push our house prices up, they're not exactly being accurate. The majority of mortgage lenders that I, that I work with, the banks and the monoline lenders, none of them would take CERB or CRB as income when you went to qualify for a mortgage. People had to be actively employed and they had to have a pay stub and a letter of employment showing that they were actively employed. So. Even if the CERB and the CRB were enough money to qualify for a mortgage at $2,000 a month does not, does not qualify for much of a mortgage in Canada, um, especially with these rising house prices. But even if, they, even if that was enough to qualify for a mortgage, the banks wouldn't take it. So I don't see how those, income, those were contributing factors to our house prices. It, that just doesn't hold water. So if you hear these, uh, if, if you do hear those arguments going forward into the next coming months as they try to explain that inflation rate, please look at that, please look at that with a bit of skepticism because it's just not true. Finally, Gravel touched on what happens when interest rates rise. What happens to the affordability of all these large, extra large mortgages once rates go up? And Gravel really, he turned to the stress test as a reason that we should be okay once uh, once rates start to rise. Rules, the what we call B20, which is a, a test of seeing if you're able to absorb a sharp increase in interest rates is now the basics, uh, one of the requirements before you get a mortgage. So that kind of protects, um, uh, in some sense, protects the, the uh, reduce the vulnerability related to high indebtedness for households. So with the stress test, everybody was qualified at minimum as being able to pay over 2% of their contract rate. So the rate that they're actually paying, they were shown to be able to pay a rate 2% higher than that. In reality, it was probably closer to 3% uh, that, that they were actually, that they, that they had to show that they were able to pay. Um, so that's, uh, t uh, according to Gravel, that should provide a buffer um, when rates do go up. And yeah, I think that that will definitely provide a bit of a buffer when rates do start to start going up inevitably. But the real issue I think lies with home equity lines of credit, which I think we've seen were run up quite a bit throughout the pandemic. And also any debt that was taken on after somebody got a mortgage. So you have to qualify for a certain amount once you get the mortgage. But once that mortgage, once you do have that mortgage, nothing stops borrowers from going and buying a car and running up that home equity line of credit. Um, and home equity lines of credit. Most of them are all based off prime. You may have a fixed side of your mortgage, but then you also, which are gonna be locked in at that low rate that you qualified for, but you also have that home equity line, which when, when, when prime rises, so does, so does the interest rate on that line of credit. So that will increase the payments as well. But it doesn't look like interest rates are going to be rising anytime soon. Um, a lot of the markets are still thinking that they're going to rise in April and that the Bank of Canada is going to have to put on the brakes very quickly in much of the same way that the Federal Reserve is having to put the brakes, is going to have to put the brakes on quickly in the US with news that their inflation rate is probably going to hit 6.8%. So the real worry here is that the Bank of Canada isn't moving fast enough and they're going to have to move like that once inflation gets, if inflation gets out of control. So right now the inflation rate's at 5%. I'm not sure the Bank of Canada is going to be able to continue this sort of dovish tone, this sort of wait and see, kick the can down the road approach if we hit that six, seven, eight percent mark. If that's in the in the, in the the offing, if, if that's what's coming, then the population simply won't, I don't think, I can't see them supporting high inflation rates with low, with low interest rates because um, just too many people are getting priced out of the market and we're seeing we're, we're, we're seeing food prices go up gas prices go up and uh, something is going to have to give i would say by at latest the second half of next year 
but we will have updates as those inflation rates come out and uh, as the as we get more data on those real estate prices click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates and thanks so much for watching